On the 5th of August, 1943, there was a long procession of women brought into the execution chamber of a horrific and brutal German prison. There were eight women who were executed on the guillotine in the space of roughly 30 minutes, and the executioner worked to take the head off one of his victims every three minutes. It was ruthless and brutal justice for the Nazis, and each of these women had been defiant to Hitler and the Nazis, and they would not take this. The Nazis wanted complete support and loyalty to the government, but those who resisted, often in secret, risked their lives every day. There were women such as Sophie Scholl, who tried to get people to think in a different way to the Nazis, but she was guillotined too at a young age. And at the age of 34, Hilda Coppi was taken into the execution chamber in the courtyard of Plot Zense prison, and she was greeted by an executioner who quickly strapped her to the board of the German metal execution device before he locked her in place below the blade. This young woman had her whole life in front of her, but she could not stand in the way of barbarism and brutality that surrounded her Germany. Betty Gertrude Cathy Hilda Rake, as she was known, was born in Berlin on the 30th of May 1909 inside of an area of Berlin known as Mitte. She had a rather modest upbringing. She helped her mother who ran a shop that sold leather and different accessories. Hild, as she was known, attended school and did well and she then worked inside of a doctor's surgery, becoming an assistant to a GP or a doctor and she spent many years in the 1930s doing this, but at the time in Berlin there was a huge change as there was also around the whole of Germany. In the years before, Hitler had seized control of the country and was now imposing his brutal will and the Nazi government were making the lives of many people a complete misery. Those people who had differing political beliefs to the Nazis were rounded up and were then sent to concentration camps, the earliest being Dachau, and over the years thousands of people who were suspected of being resistors were being rounded up and sent to different places, and many disappeared. Some were murdered by their torturers, the Gestapo, but others who were conducting their political work to subvert the Nazis under cover, which of course was very dangerous. The Nazis had, in the years before, began to ban other political parties so they could establish a one-party state with a dictator leading the nation. It was expected that all were to support this and unite behind Hitler, but this was not the case. Hilda was working in Berlin and the city as a clerk at the Reich Insurance Institute for Clerical Workers. And whilst here, she got to know a, nan, a man named Hans Koppi, and the pair then struck a romantic relationship and they would get married some years later in the June of 1941. But she had been a supporter of the Communist Party and had many friends in the KPD, the Communist Party of Germany, and of course these were considered the enemies of the Nazis. Hitler had communists beaten up at rallies and he set his brown shirt thugs on them and eventually they were thrown inside of prisons. So to be a communist inside of Nazi Germany was incredibly dangerous. During the Second World War, Hilda, who was now married along with her husband, began to help other communists and people who were being targeted by the Nazis. She regularly listened to the band radio station Radio Moscow or The Voice of Russia. and She then took up arms against the government. Specifically, Hilda was beginning to broadcast information that she had heard via band radio stations to other people and also resistance groups and she was a member of the Red Orchestra, a group of communists who were in contact with the Red Army and they would send over information and intelligence to the Soviet Union through radios. Hilda through this also passed on information about the war effort and she, as well as this, relayed greetings from prisoners of war to their families. This was very important and it gave the people inside of her circles a real picture as to what was happening with the war effort as Nazi propaganda did not tell a true picture and the people were not told that they were losing key battles. 
She also broadcast messages from the group known as the Red Orchestra via radio and also through leaflets as well as stickers which were put up around major cities. However, this was very dangerous and she, along with her husband, were then both arrested by the Gestapo on the 12th of September 1942. She was arrested alongside her mother and her husband's parents and brother. It was very much for the Gestapo a family roundup, and Hilda Coppi was at the time pregnant. She was transferred to Barminstras Women's Prison and she gave birth to a son on the 27th of November. On the 22nd of December 1942, less than a month after her son was born, she was informed that her husband had been sentenced to death. But then Hilda Coppi was brought to the People's Court herself to stand accused of high treason against the Nazi state and for this, she was tried in front of the ruthless judge Roland Freisler. He took no prisoners at all. With the way that he dished out death sentences and he screamed in the face of Hilda before then sentencing her to death. She was sent to the Plot Zensi prison in Berlin to await her death sentence, but at the time she had lodged a plea of clemency for the fact she was just recently a mother. Hitler had none of this and refused to accept her pleas and instead confirmed her death sentence. He only delayed it a matter of months so that she could nurse her child, who was named after her husband. On the 5th of August, 1943, Hilda Coppi was brought into the courtyard of the prison and specifically she was walked towards a brick building which stood. This was the execution chamber of the prison and inside was a German guillotine. A fully metal device along with a hanging beam which was installed to take the lives of many people at once. Interestingly, inside of this chamber Hitler would later order some of the executions to be taped so that he could watch them back in his evenings. But Hilda Coppi was one of many women who were executed on the guillotine in that hour. She was executed fifth out of the eight women who were beheaded on the evening of the 5th of August 1943. Her execution was well documented by the German authorities, and she entered the execution chamber and had her hands cuffed behind her back, and the guards inside of the chamber then confirmed her identity. He then passed her over to the executioner. He pulled back a curtain that sheltered the guillotine and it is likely that blood from the previous executions were all over the floor. Hilda was composed as she was led to the guillotine and she was then taken behind the curtain and had her top pulled down over her shoulders to allow the blade to fall successfully on her neck. The executioner then strapped her to the guillotine board and he slid this into place and released the blade upon her neck. It was claimed that it took three seconds from when Hilda entered the execution chamber to when she was passed over to the executioner and that it then took a further five seconds until her head had been taken clean off. It fell into the basket below and the executioner then placed this inside of the coffin which had been prepared in a room next door along with her body which was then sent to the German university anatomically dissected. She was 33 years old when she was executed. There were so many people who during the Second World War resisted the Nazis, but those who were discovered were usually subjected to ruthless and brutal executions at the hand of the executioners. That hour inside of the prison, Hilda Coppi was one of eight women who were executed in around half an hour. But her story is one that deserves to be remembered. Thank you for watching and to support please remember to subscribe and again thank you so much for watching.